All right, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So today is 282 of the study that I'm conducting in relation to the comparison between a nine to five and gig work. So with that being said, hold on. With that being said, let me go ahead and share my screen with y'all real quick so I can show y'all what's going on in relation to further conducting a study. Hey Siri, mm -hmm. what is the minimum wage in Michigan for 2024? I'm gonna hit this link, boom, there we go. So it says the 2024 minimum wage in Michigan increased to $10.33 per hour. This increase came into effect on January 1st, 2024. Boom. Okay. All right. Let's end this recording real quick. There we go. But anyway, so. Mm. So what I'm doing is I'm literally conducting a study in relation to which job opportunity may be best for you? Because obviously, the gig work is better for me. Because if I'm thinking about how these businesses are partnered or linked together. So, if I'm considered a dasher, a food delivery individual in that market space... And then on the other side of the scale, you are working in the food industry, okay? I feel like, you know what? I've been there and done that. I don't want to be on that side anymore. I understand the extension of perks on the gig work side of the scale. So with that being said, okay, so now if minimum wage is set at $10.33 per hour, working eight hours, right? Would I then prefer to be stationary during the eight hours? Do I prefer to move around? So that's two things that we got on the scale right there. Do I want to be stuck in a nine to five in pretty much one spot doing multiple tasks inside of a building for eight hours? Or would I rather be out in the field with those same eight hours, making that same $10.33 per hour rate, okay? Now, in extension to understanding that gig work side, you consider an independent contractor. Therefore, i.e., let's say I wanted to give myself a raise. I am considered a small business, right? I'm the CEO, COO, and CFO of this small business. So I want to hyper-generate or inflate that daily rate of return or that hourly rate of return. Let's just say by an additional $2, $3 per day. I'm able to pay myself that how. All I would have to do is accept an additional order that's paying out that inflated amount that I want to receive per day. I'm not saying that you cannot get overtime at your job, but listen to what I just said. Overtime. You got to work overtime to get the additional revenue that I'm trying to generate per hour. You got to wait until the ninth hour for you to get any additional pay. You're not getting no overtime until after the eighth hour. I can inflate my hourly rate by the hour on this side of the scale as an independent contractor, i.e. a small business. That's all I'm saying. You start to learn these things as you shift your paradigm to really just understanding the difference between the two. It's no hit towards no nine to five worker. But let's be clear. What is the nine to five considered? Is it a job or is it a career 
or is it a profession? So now if you got three tiers of operations when it comes to a nine to five, which tier are you operating from? Because it's the same thing with gig work. Are you a small business? Are you a large business? Or are you working on the corporate level? If that makes sense, whatever. I'm just throw, I'm just throwing out three tiers just to match it. Balance out the scale. Nonetheless, theoretically speaking, everybody got to start at ground zero, especially, especially if your objective is not to go out here and further inform yourself in the form of what? Getting an education, securing a degree, which is going to place you in a career space opposed to a job. Therefore, i.e. already possibly 2x in your rate of return by default because you have a degree. Let me say it again. It's going to automatically possibly 2x your rate of return because you have a degree. Now, we also not going to sit up here and act like with this entrepreneur space. People don't have degrees. People is believing in themselves so much so that they like, you know what? I can do this thing that I feel like I'm highly skilled at. I've been developing this skill set as far as I know my entire life. So now it's time to pull the trigger on this thing and see if it works. I have to start at the ground level as a small business to see if I can nurture the business so that it grows. Which could take anywhere between one to 10 years. But understand in the nine to five space, rumor has it, you're going to be approximately working for 30 plus years before you retire. And then at the end of that road, what do you own? What are your assets? Are you secure? Is your family theoretically secure by the 30 year span that you chose to work? So guess what you need to make sure you're doing? Yeah, rumor has it too, you need to be investing, whether it be in stocks, real estate, small business, a business at all. I'm just saying. So if y'all never learn these things along your working journey of a nine to five employee, I'm so sorry, but this is why. Wealthy people not only try and inform you of what to do, and it's like it's falling on deaf ears. It's almost like they just try and tell you like, hey, invest. Hey, in a business. Hey, in the stock market. Hey, in real estate. They're like, oh, they just talking stuff. They only can do that because they rich. Everybody didn't start off that way. They actually listen, start applying the information to the thing and nurturing it and seeing to grow and say, whoa, this really works. It then becomes a game, a learning game where you then figure out how to elevate every aspect of your life. It is a, a easy and simple metric to follow once you understand how to follow it. It is the blueprint to become wealthy. So whether you want to argue it or not, then it's just like, are you going to be somebody who worked 30 plus years and then complain about inflation? Or are you going to learn how to gather certain pieces of information that's already scattered out here? Okay. That's already scattered out here for you to change the trajectory 
of what your financial journey looks like just by listening to the information and then applying the information where it needs to be applied. So then you are then able to learn and understand how to either keep up with inflation or beat it. But complaining about it is like, why is that even an option? Why are we even complaining about inflation? When we should be learning how to keep up with it or beat it. Like, come on. Like, I understand that as humans, we want to release certain energy, get certain things off of our chest. But that's when you also start to discover you either going to hand that to the Lord or to a therapist, psychiatrist, whatever you need to do. Because just complaining about it in general to people who are not considered professionals in those fields to listen to the issues that you may have to actually solve them. Oh, baby, I can imagine how, how worse that's going to get over time. But anyway, I'm ranting. I need to get up out of here. My sh my shift start in another 29 minutes, so I got to go. Peace. I'll see y'all back here later. All right, so I got an order that I shouldn't have never accepted. It's $6.50 for 4.9 miles. But just to get my day started, since I was already at the post in a tropical smoothie cafe already right here, I just was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and pick this order up. Cause you know, I'm out here, I'm already feeling awesome. So at this point, this one of those kind of dummy mission slash complete mission days where people just might look around and find out and get their order, even though I shouldn't have accepted it. If you get the drip. All right, but anyway, let me turn this off while I get a copyright. <laughs> They ain't like us. They ain't like us. They ain't like us. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. But anyway, I gotta bring up this order. Y'all is like us. We all just out here working. Trying to take care of our business, y'all. I'm taking stuff personal. <clears throat> it's no personal attack. We just sharing our experience. Stop crying. Alright, so this individual had the 7-Eleven order. It was a two-part drop-off. And they actual um, house look pretty cool with the decorations on it for Halloween. I'm digging the little decorations, though. Like, I was like, that's kind of cool. I'm liking it. But anyway, let me go ahead and get up out of here because I'm exposing all a private business. Stop the cat. <clears throat> let me go ahead. All right, so I'm on my way to the second part of the order. That's out the elementary school. Nonetheless, let's get the show on the road. <clears throat> hey, you know what you yeah, so I know. Yeah. All right, so I'm here. I'm gonna drop this water off. All right, y'all. So I am just checking in to kind of pull y'all up to speed in regard to what's been going on with me dashing for the past two days. So mind you, my sleeping pattern is completely off. And then I be having audacity to stay up late trying to capture footage for y'all. And it's like, I mean, of course y'all ain't asked me to do it, but this is me multitasking and trying to complete multiple tasks, okay? Because I got a DoorDash regardless. I got to attend to other matters, okay? I have to film, staying consistent on YouTube as a content creator. I mean, I just got a lot of stuff that I got to do anyway. So it's just like, yeah, we got to we gotta complete these tasks. So multitasking it is. So... With that being said, I've been working half days for the past two days. And 
And theoretically speaking, with that being said, technically I only worked one full day. So technically in relation to that, I've secured $125. But I left my home base facility two days in a row. So I've been kind of breaking up my shift. So technically with me looking at it like that, that means I'm $75 short of hitting my minimum of $100 per day. I'm $75 short of that goal. So I'm going to wake up in the morning and try and multitask in regards to working in different zones tomorrow and see how that work out. Because if I can make $100 or anywhere between $50 to $100 in one zone and then pop in another zone and make another $50 to $100 in another zone, then that means I automatically slightly inflate my daily rate of return just by multitasking in different zones, if that make any kind of sense. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, um, because these other apps, it's like multi-apping is going insane because some of these apps ain't even worth turning on. And I'm going to just keep it 100. Like some of these apps ain't even worth turning on, okay? I signed up for Spark Driver, which is the app for Walmart and Sam's Club pickup locations. And I'm on a wait list for the zone that I chose to work in because now once that app clears me off the wait list, then I'll be able to multi-app between DoorDash, I have Instacart, and I have I would then have Spark Driver added into the bunch. So now I'll be in a theoretical high traffic grocery area where those apps would literally then make more logical sense to turn on to multi-app if that make any kind of sense because in between just the food delivery multi-app and it's just like i'll give it to doordash doordash is the better food delivery app i'll definitely give them the props accolades whatever they want to have in relation to that no other food delivery app is comparing to doordash like day number one um but as far as multi-apping when it comes to shop and deliver i'm hearing a whole lot of stuff about the spark driver i.e like i said the walmart sam's club club locations which you just picking up the orders and dropping them off now DoorDash also has the Dash link where it's something kind of like Amazon. I kind of want to check that out too since I tried the Dash link, picking up packages and dropping them off because that's not bad neither. I don't mind doing that kind of shift either. Like it's typically anywhere between a five to eight hour shift and you can literally make anywhere between a hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred dollars in five to eight hours like for sure sign me the fuck up so i can be done and call it a day like what like i'll sign up for that every day but unfortunately everything got a wait list so because everything got a wait list unfortunately you wouldn't be able to do stuff like that every single day and then i'm not gonna lie Whew. Um, my ratings or my acceptance rate is really, really low. Like it's so low. It's so crazy. Um, it is so low. It's crazy. But, um, I'm reading the ratings uh, and reward section. Substitution issues. Let's see. 35% pro stay below. Ah! Okay. So I'm excellent. Bad substitution. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, today was decent. I ain't tripping because I generated some revenue. So, I ain't never mad about that. As long as I can generate some kind of revenue throughout the day, I'm all fine with that. Because the objective for me is to always learn how to or understand how to stay ahead. That's all I be needing to do. If I can stay ahead, I'm good. But if I'm running neck to neck, like paycheck to paycheck kind of method, like I'm running in a hazard zone financially, then then it's a problem. Then it becomes a problem. When I can't afford to reinvest in fuel, if it's a possible repair that needs to be done, I can't afford that. Um, oil changes, which I have one that should be coming up within the next, I'd say, two weeks to a month. So I have to prepare for these foreseen costs. They're not unforeseen, they're foreseen costs. I know that I have to reinvest in the business as far as transportation costs go. So that's a no brainer right there. And then I have two cellular devices, one that I'm recording on right now, plus this one. These cell phones coming up in, let me see, about five more days. Yep, in about, no, four more days. Four days, that's due. So, yeah, I need to make sure that I'm staying focused so that I can be securing the funding that I need to continue to operate. That's just simple as I could put it. I need funding to operate. Operate the business, i.e. an extension, funding to cover my cost of living. Or guess what? Yes, everything is going to simultaneously collapse. And I will be starting over from ground zero. So, with that being said, I'm documenting this journey to make sure I don't experience a financial collapse over the duration of my own financial journey. And if you're picking up any tips in relation to what I'm doing to stay afloat, to be able to then one day either keep up with or beat inflation, then that means we winning over here. That's all I'm saying. Then that means we are winning. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out this vlog, get this vlog up. And I guess with that being said, I'll see y'all out in the field tomorrow because I really need to get some rest. I be straight tripping. I need to get some rest. And like I said, I'll see y'all tomorrow. So peace.